Hi, I'm Rex Schrader, and I'm the head judge for the RoboPlay video competition. With me is a robotic student, my alter ego, Young Rex. Hello, fellow kids! Together, we're going to give you information about the RoboPlay video competition. We'll go over the details of the competition overall. We'll talk about the general requirements for videos. We'll talk about how videos are scored and how the rubric works. And then we'll go into depth on each competition category. The RoboPlay video competition is a C-STEM video competition. So what's a C-STEM video? Well, in the C-STEM fields, we all have the shared concept of repeatability or maintainability. In science fields, you need to publish your results so others can independently reproduce them. In computer science, your code is not going to be maintained by you, but maybe by a team of people, so it needs to be readable by them. Uh, in engineering, you make a design and then other people are actually going to build it, so they have to understand the design that you have. So in order to make a C-STEM video, you're not just going to record your video, but you're also going to produce documentation so that others can reproduce your video. We'll go into more depth in each of the competition categories about how you're going to do that. The video submission date changes from year to year, but it's generally about a month before the UC Davis C-STEM day. You can find details in the RoboPlay section of the C-STEM website here. There are six categories that your video can win in. Best Storyline, Best Choreography, Most Interesting Task, Best Custom Design Part, Best Film Promoting Computational Thinking, and Best Overall Video. Note though, with the exception of Best Overall Video, a video can only place in one category. We'll go into more details on each category later in the video, but before we get to that, let's talk about the general requirements for each video. There are three different robotic systems that you can use in your video, for Robo Linkbots and Lego Mindstorms. No other robotic systems may be used in your video. Videos may be between one and five minutes long. Now, if your video is only one minute long, better be action-packed, but if you're running closer to five minutes, make sure that your content is engaging and interesting. Ideally, you should shoot between two and three minutes long. Robots must be the primary actors in most scenes in your video. Robots should not be used as props or the audience for your acting. Alas, poor York bot, I knew him. No, no, young Rex. The robots are the actors. It's okay for robots to interact with humans. In fact, that would be great. But they should take an active role in the scene, not just be a static prop. Your video is required to have a standard title card. The title card must be on the screen for no more than five seconds. There are three pieces of information that must be on the title card. The video name, the school name, and then RoboPlay video competition with the competition year. For your video, you may want to use intertitles. Intertitles are the cards that are used to show dialogue or narration in silent movies. Your intertitles should be short, just long enough to read the text or dialogue. You may not use scrolling text of any kind in your video. A 60 second scroll on a two hour movie is okay, but 15 or 30 seconds on a three minute video is way too long. Instead, how about a simple Meanwhile, back at the ranch. No video from external sources is allowed and is grounds for disqualification. You should also not use copyright music without permission. Instead, look for Creative Commons music. Here's a list of websites that have great Creative Commons music available for you. All videos must have a credit screen. Just a single page, no more than five seconds. The following elements are required for your credit screen. List of participating students, your school name, your teacher name, a list of CH code files used to produce the video, and any attribution or permission, permissions for Creative Commons or copyrighted works that you've used. Robots in your video must use pre-written code. Your team must write their own code, so please don't copy and paste example code from the book or from other students' projects. Plagiarizing code is grounds for disqualification. The use of motion capture to generate code or follow mode to remote control the robot is also prohibited. Before we go into detail about the categories, let's talk a little bit about scoring. Videos will be scored in each category based on the rubric. A rubo what? Rubric. A rubric is a set of criteria that the judges use to score each video. Each category has specific elements that will be judged with examples of scores for each level of difficulty. This is to help judges from all over the state and country to score your videos in the same way. The more elements that meet the criteria, the better your video will do. You can find a copy of this year's rubric 
here or in the video description. Wait, isn't that cheating? Not at all. We want you to know how you'll be judged. The hard part is executing. Think of it as an open book test. Cool. You may want to check out previous year's competition videos. You can get ideas for your own videos or see what students have done previously. Previous year's videos are available on the Roleplay scoreboard. Here. The first category is storytelling. Use your robots to tell us a story. It can be a story you've written yourself. It could be a fairy tale, a parody of a movie, or anything you think of that will give a complete story. Do make sure that your story has a clear beginning, middle, and end. You should also try to give your characters a clear identity and personality using costumes, props, and dialogue. You should try and tell a unique story. Take care if you're going to tell a common fairy tale like Goldilocks and the Three Bears or The Three Little Pigs. Many students have done these stories before. If you want your video to stand out, put your own unique spin on it. Storytelling videos require a script. There are three required elements to the script. Here's an example script for Goldiebot and the Three Bears. The first required element is a scene header with a reference to the code file or files which will drive the robots in that scene. Not required, but recommended as a description of the scene. This can be helpful for planning before you start filming. The next required element is stage direction. Stage direction briefly describes how the robot or actors will move in the scene. These are the direction that your code will actually implement. The final element is dialogue. Anything which is said by the actors or narrator should be included in your dialogue. Note that the actual format of the script is not critical, so long as these three elements can be easily identified. The second category is choreography. Dance, baby, dance! No, no, young Rex. The robots have to dance, not you. Aww. There are several important elements to choreography. The first is synchronization with the music. Unlike my younger self, your robot should bop along in time to the music. Points will be given for keeping time. The next is interacting with other robots and interacting with the environment. Can your robots do -si do What about a swing dance? Maybe a maypole dance? Robots should ideally interact with one another, not just next to each other. And the final element is technical difficulty. With CH, nine robots moving in sync is not very difficult to do, but nine robots weaving complex geometric shapes in time to the music is. You get more points by having robots do something more complex. Don't forget, though, you shouldn't use copyrighted music without permission. The third category is most interesting task. What can you do with a robot? Build a building, raise a bridge, open or close a door, fold laundry, do your homework, draw a picture, make a cup of tea, how can you use a robot to do something that is worth doing and interesting? There are four elements that you'll be scored on. Technical difficulty. How challenging is it for the robot to complete this task? Hitting something with a stick is easy, but making a cup of tea is quite hard. Innovation. How unusual or interesting is your task? Is it interesting, advanced, original, and or new? Is it something that you've seen a robot do before? Creative use of robots. Have you used the robots in some novel way? And fourth, creative use of attachments. Are you using attachments in a new or interesting way? The fourth category is custom part. Your part should be both complex and functional. Using a stick to hit another robot with might be functional, but it's not very complex. A series of gears to spin a, win a pinwheel might be complex, but it's not very functional or useful. A working grabber arm, though, would be both complex and functional. Documentation is also a key element of the custom part category. And a student of average skill should be able to recreate the part using the supplied documentation. You should provide human readable drawings or diagrams with measurements, as well as any CAD files. If you used a 3D printer, laser cutter, or other machine tool, you should also attach the files that you use to drive the machine. For example, OBJ or STL files. The final category is computational thinking. Remember, a student of average skill should be able to recreate your video using the code that you've supplied. Ask a classmate if they can read and understand your code. Other, element, other important elements are code complexity. Use loops, conditionals, functions, and other complex structures to write efficient code. Code readability. Use comments, white space, and clear variable names to document your code and make it easy to understand.
code header. Every file must have a standard code header. If the header is not present in every code file, your video will be disqualified. This is the required header for all RoboPlay video competition code files. This header includes the video competition year, your division, the video title, your teacher's name, your school name, the names of all students on this video team, the name of the student or students who wrote this code, and a general description of what goes on. Those are your categories. There is also an award for best overall video. Once the judges have determined the winner for each individual category, category, they go back and evaluate all the videos to find the best video in multiple categories. For example, a video that is both a compelling story and a dance number with great choreography might not win in either category, but it may be the best overall. I'm gonna win it. I'm gonna win it. You go, Rex. In this video, we've given you the details on the competition. We've gone over the general requirements for all videos. We've explained how scoring works and what a rubric is. We've also gone in depth on each of the scoring categories. You can find the full list of resources in the video description and on the credit screen. Note that if there's a contradiction between this video and the written rules, the written rules do take precedence. If you have any rules or rubric questions, you can have your teacher contact, contact us here. That's all we have for today. Happy roboting. Peace out.